in IDW type circles, like you look at Ben Shapiro videos and, you know, a lot of the clips are like Ben Shapiro owns the libs, you know, it's like all this, it's very combative. And yeah. I think in our media, there's this kind of idea that you can't really talk to liberals. And, you know, if, to be fair, like when I tried to talk to, to really hardcore liberals, I used to live in Seattle and it's like super liberal city. And I was also not quite as good as good of a, of a communicator as I was, as I am now, but it seemed like <laughs> people are just endlessly triggered and I would also be triggered and then they would trigger me and then it would kind of escalate. But uh, from, yeah. from what I've talked to you about in- uh, Codependent. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's codependent. It's exactly what it is. But somehow, <laughs> according to you uh, in your lectures, you, maybe you trigger them, but you don't, like you can have these conversations with very liberal university students. And I think that's quite a valuable skill to have. And I wonder how you do that. Look, I don't know. Um, I struggle with, with, with the teaching myself because I, I, you know, I've, got, I've got a bit radicalized. <laughs> so yeah, I've got, I've got radicalized towards the IDW at different times where you, or sort of in that space a bit where you, you lose a bit of perspective. Um, and you sort of, yeah, so, but I mean, what I always try to remember as, as a teacher is like the golden rule is if you can keep the dialogue space open, if you can, if it's really, really obvious to your students that they can say whatever the hell they want to you, then even if I'm heading off in the wrong direction, then, um, which I do from time to time, especially when you get into a bit of a bad place emotionally, then they can actually hammer you. And, um, and if you kind of let yourself be open to that, like it really hurts. Often, one thing I really, really try to do is if I have a student I really disagree with, I try to be really nice to them. That's like a conscious thing I do. Yeah. It's like, because I know that, I, I know back when I was a student and, and so many of the teachers disagreed with me and really smashed me. I'm like, God, what's the one thing I can do, you know? Even if I can't see into my own soul and, you know, even if I'm twisted, I can at least consciously try to be really nice to them. And not, like, no, I don't mean like overly nice, but sort of generous and just listen, help them, you know. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, that's a digression. Just made me think no, of that. That's, that's a fantastic point because I think, you know, a lot of people that I, I meet, and I can't read someone's mind. And so this is, I'm kind of mind reading here in, in my own sense, but like I meet people who are hardcore feminists and actually, you know, they've, when you, when you get into their backstory, they've grown up with terrible men throughout their lives, you know, and, and maybe they're a hardcore feminist because there was not a single good man in their entire lives. And so it's like, if you disagree with someone and you present yourself as a great, uh, as a good person, as a magnanimous person to them, then, you know, they they are not necessarily using logic when they are attacking you and and so you don't always need to appeal to their logical sense because it might be something yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going on. There's, there's levels 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 i mean we're interacting on so many levels